Okay, what's up everybody? Hope you have a good weekend. Just want to post a video here this morning about what we're going to be doing <clears throat> today and tomorrow. We're going to kind of flip the uh, order of what we're doing things in or what we normally would do things in. I'm going to have you watch this video at your leisure today, Monday, and then <clears throat> we will meet tomorrow live and do the homework as a group, at least get started on it. So hopefully that will cut down on some of the time you have to be online and it will help me assure that you don't have any questions when you're actually doing your homework. So we can record the videos ahead of time, post them on the YouTube, you can take the notes, then we'll meet live together to see if you have any questions when you actually start doing the work. So we'll give that kind of model a try this week. People have been forgetting though to, to make sure that they turn in their notes from the sections as part of their homework. So today's homework is you turn in the notes from today's video. So as I'm going through some of the examples, you should be writing those down and then you'll turn those in before we meet tomorrow, Tuesday, and we'll meet tomorrow at 9.30. So before that time, you have to turn in the notes from this video. Post them into Google Classroom if you're not using OneNote. If you're using OneNote, <clears throat> just click the turn, turn it in button for the notes assignment that you will see on there and I'll check your OneNote folder. iPads should be ready by the end of the week. Hopefully we'll get everybody going with that. So don't want to keep this video, don't want to make this video too long, so we're going to get right into it. We're on section 11.4. <clears throat> There's really no new information here today. So hopefully this shouldn't be um, anything too drastically difficult. And it should be pretty much right along the lines of what we did, especially last time. So here we go. Let's start with <clears throat> the idea of today. We're just gonna take these random figures. Like let's say that I had a figure that looked like, um, Something like this. Not even that. Let's go back one. So I had something that looked like that. This is a straight line. So we've got this kind of random figure that looks like that. How can I find the area of that? That's not anything that we've done before. It's not a polygon, a regular polygon. It's not a triangle or a square or a parallelogram or trapezoid or anything like that. But if we can start to see that this actually, this figure contains essentially like a rectangle and two triangles, then it becomes very easy to solve what I'm looking for, right? I could just kind of draw in here these angles and I would see that I have a triangle right here another triangle over here, and a rectangle or whatever right there, it could be a square, it depends on what the side lengths are, but if I would just take all those three areas of those three things and add them together, I'd have the area of this figure. We call these composite figures. So I just need to figure out the sum of all of these figures that I know how to solve the area for, and then I'll be able to get the area of this random or composite figure. So let's just look at example one. It says, which is the closest to the area of this composite figure? And it has the figure that looks something like this. All right? It even put in a line there. That's a diameter, even though it looks a little crooked, but you get the idea. That's a, let's do it better. Let's draw it like that. Okay, that's better. And it tells me that it, from here all the way to that diameter is 19. On the bottom, it tells me this whole distance down on the bottom is 22. And it tells me that each one of these is six. And it also tells me that the distance from the top to the bottom is six. So there's my figure. Now, so if I could figure out what the area is of the circle, I have a circle there or half a circle. So if I found the area of that circle and divided it 
in half, basically, because that's a half of a circle. And I took the area of this whole rectangle, including that open part. So if I took the area of the whole rectangle, and then I just subtracted out the area that's cut out here, which is a triangle, then I would have the area of my composite figure. So let's just kind of go through this as what, how I'm going to do it. I'm going to find the area of the circle and divide it by two and add that to the area, the area of the rectangle, but I'm gonna subtract out the area of that triangle. And that should give me the area of this composite figure. So let's just go through this and see if I can figure out what these things are, the area of each of these things. Well, this radius, this diameter is six because it tells me over here that the, the height of this thing is six. So that makes this diameter six, which means the radius of this circle is obviously three. So the area of the circle is pi r squared. So that's pi r squared. And we only need half the circle, so I'll cut it in half if I divide by two. Then find the area of the rectangle, which is 19 times six base times the height, right? So there's that area. And then if I subtract out the area of the triangle, which if I drew in a couple more lines here, we would see it. Area of the triangle is half the base times the height. Well, I don't know what the height is necessarily. I'm gonna to have to figure that out. But that is an equilateral triangle since all the sides are six. And so that means that I have essentially cut that side in half. So that side is three. That's obviously a right angle. So I can just use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the height of this triangle. Let's do that first before I write anything else in here. Let's say that we'll call the height of it x. So three squared plus x squared equals six squared. That's nine plus x squared equals 36 squared. And so I'll just do that on my, whoops, not 36 squared, just 36. All right, so let's just subtract nine. So I get x squared equals 27. And I'll take the square root of that and I will get my calculator. Here we go. Take the square root of that. And I get about 5.2. I'll just round it. I get about 5.2 as the height of that. Okay. So that's how I'm going to figure what the area of the triangle is. I will take one half the base, which is six times the height, which is 5.2. And now I can do it on my calculator. We'll do each one separately. Let's find the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. So nine times pi divided by two, nine times pi divided by two. Let's say that's 14.14. 14.14 and add that to 19 times six. 19 times six is 114. Subtract out the area of the triangle and I get, let's see, half six times 5.2, six times 5.2 divided by two is 15.6. So now I get 14.14 14 plus 114 and subtract out, what was it, 15.6 and I get 112.5. So if I look back in the book, that is basically option A. So that's how I'm gonna find the area of my composite figure. Let's do another one 
that's maybe a little simpler than that. That's the, this is the next example there. It has a kind of like a square with a circle cut out like that. And then the rest of it like this. And then another height up here, that's a triangle like that. Okay, it tells me that this side is 10, this is 3.5, and this is five. And it tells me by drawing in these dotted lines that the center of that circle that's kind of cut out there is right there. Well, that side's five, so the radius of that circle is obviously five. So how am I gonna do this one? Well, if I take the area of this triangle on the top, add it to the area of this whole rectangle, but then subtract out the area of a fourth of the area of that circle that's cut out there, then I will get my answer. So the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle, taking out the area of the circle, but not the whole circle, but just a fourth of it, so divide by four. All right, now let's find all the areas of this. The area of the triangle is one half 10 times 3.5, the area of the plus, the area of the rectangle, which is 50, 10 times five, let's try then, minus the area of the circle. The circle has a radius of five, so that's pi r squared divided by four, because it's only a fourth of the circle. So now just do the math, let's do, 3.5 times 10 is 35 divided by 2, 35, 2 is 17.5, add 50, subtract out the area of that fourth of that circle, 25 pi, divided that by 4, and I get that, so 19.6, three basically, 19.63. So let's, this is 67.5 minus 19.63, 67.5 minus 19.63. I get 47.87 or rounded to the nearest tenth would be 47.9. It looks like that's option G. So G, would be the answer to that one, okay? Getting the picture of this, trying to find the shapes that I know I have, that I know that I can find the areas to, and finding the areas of that, it's basically just like last time, just subtracting out the parts that I don't want, and kind of having to know what all of my area formulas are, of course, but I think we're getting to the point now where we know that. Let's do one more. Here's a birdhouse, it's on the bottom of the page 659. It says, Ramon is building a birdhouse. He's going to paint from the front side. What is the area to be painted around to the nearest tent? So he's got his house, it looks kind of like this. He's got a place cut out here for the birds to go. And it says that the radius of that is one and one fourth. And it's telling me it's six and a half on the bottom, six and a half inches, five inches to there, and nine inches all the way to the top. Okay, hopefully you can see <clears throat> here that if I just make a triangle out of the top part like that, that's obviously where that is comes together. So if I just took, again, figure out what I need to find, I need to take the area of the bottom part, that rectangle, add it to the area of the triangle, and then subtract out the area of that circle, and I will have the answer. So now let's just put those in. The area of the triangle, base times the height, is six and a half times five plus the area of the triangle. Area of a triangle is one half the base, which is six and a half. And the height of that triangle, well, the height of the whole building is nine, and the 
height of the rectangle is five, so that leaves the height of the triangle to be four, because nine plus, or five plus four equals nine. So the height of that triangle is four, and then subtract out the area of that circle, that's pi r squared, which pi, the <clears throat> radius is one and a fourth squared. Okay. Now let's just put it in the calculators. <clears throat> six, six and a half times five. 6.5 times five is 32.5. Next one is six and a half times four divided by two. 13 and then one and one fourth squared is 1.5625. Oh, times pi. So let's back that up. Times that by pi. Four point nine one. Okay, 32.5 plus 13 minus 4.19 or 91, and I get 40.59 inches squared, or that's round to the nearest tenth. So 40.6 inches squared, and that is the answer. Last things that we have to do is coordinate geometry, but I think this is going to be actually the easy, easiest part because a lot of times we have to use like distance formula, which I don't think we're going to have to do. Maybe you might have to, but in these, it looks like we're not going to have to. So let's do number four on the top of page 661. It says find the area of each figure. Well, I've got point N up here. That is at point zero five. And N over here is at three zero. And, and then P is zero minus three. And then Q is minus three, zero. Find the area of this figure. Well, that's two triangles, the triangle on the top and the triangle on the bottom. None of the sides are parallel, so it's not a any kind of thing shape that I could just plug in a formula for, I don't think. You could figure out if the slopes are the same and then decide whether it was kind of a trapezoid or something like that and then do it that way, but that seems like extra work. Let's just take this as two triangles and add them together. So what's the height of the purple triangle? Well, if I started here at the origin and went straight up, that's five. So the height is five of this purple triangle. And the base, if I went from three, over to minus three along there, that's six. So that's the area of that purple triangle. So let's add that to the area of the orange triangle on the bottom. The height of that is three, because it start at the origin and go down to minus three. And that has the same base, six. So this is one half of 30, which is 15, plus one half of 18, which is nine. So 15 plus nine, that is 24 units squared. All right, so that's basically what you're doing today, or not today, you even just have to take notes today. That's basically what we're gonna be doing tomorrow when we meet as a class live on the Zoom. So, we will see you then. Don't do any homework tonight. I'm not even giving you the problems. You have other things you need to do. That's good. If you don't, have some free time. We will see you tomorrow morning and we will work on the homework together. Should be able to get most of it done through the course of the period that we have. So we will see you then. Peace out.